But Very high quick. impact, high yeah. impact. Oh, it's it's full high impact. You have to be able to endure pain, and that's why I always put myself in uncomfortable situations. There was no Facebook then. There was no Instagram. I had no money for Google Ads. What did I do? The number one most important thing that they don't teach you in school. Welcome to another episode of the Dan Lok Show. Today, we, our show is on fire. On fire! We have a special guest, a very, very special guest. Now, before I bring him on, let me tell you a little bit about, just quickly about the, the fitness industry. Now, the fitness industry has been around a long time. It is not a new industry, but I think very few entrepreneurs, they bring a new take on it and do it a little bit differently. Like, how do you cut through the noise in the marketplace like that, right? It's not new. It's kind of a lot of competition. What do we do? How do we create that blue ocean? And that's what we're going to talk about. Doesn't matter if you're in the fitness industry or not. So I'm super excited. George, welcome to the show. Oh, Dan, thank you so much for having me on. I, I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to providing some, some great knowledge and giving out some golden nuggets. We're going to drop some bombs, right? <laughs> oh, we're, oh, we're going to drop them, baby. We're going to drop okay. them. Okay. So share with us uh, quickly your background, what inspired you to even start the business in the first place? Sure. So um, I'm the founder and CEO of Gym Guys. We are the fastest growing in the uh, personal training space, the largest in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're pretty much disrupting the fitness industry. And for mm -hmm. me, I've always been in the fitness and I love helping people, but I never wanted to open up a brick and mortar because I always thought, you know, it's really not the greatest move. And, you know, obviously now with COVID and everything that's occurred without sounding insensitive, it's been very beneficial to our business. But, you know, for me, I've always looked at, you know, like, how can I make money when I'm not working? Because the biggest problem people have is people that get into business, they work too much in the business and they should be working on their business. And for me, you know, I used to look at being a trainer as being a doctor, right? A doctor without patients is unemployed and a trainer without clients is unemployed. And I used to always say to myself, how can I make money when I'm not working? But I was taught to go to school and I was taught to get a nine to five job and I was taught to make sure I have a steady income coming in. So I graduated from school, which I have my thoughts on. And then I go into this job and I'm now working with people that literally commit spiritual suicide every day and they hate their jobs and they drive to work miserable. And these are like, these are like legit stats that people actually spend three to four hours per day at work, working on non-work related tasks. Now, why would you want to be miserable? You have to enjoy what you love. You have to be passionate about it. So I went back into fitness because I love helping people. And one day, one of my clients came in late and said, Josh, I wish you can come to my house. I just don't have any equipment. And I was like, wow, this is like the most simplest idea. No one has ever professionalized it. Well, I'm going to get a van. I'm going to stock it with all the necessary equipment possible, 365 pieces to be exact. We're going to go out and provide our three C's, convenient, customized, and creative workouts. We're going to service clients anywhere from their home, office, pool, park, place of worship, hospitals, corporations. We're going to literally bring the workout to you. I created mm -hmm. Gym Guys, and here we are today. You know, I started in 2008 out of my parents' dining room, as I like to refer to it as shoe dogging it. My good friend, <laughs> Mr. Phil Knight. If you yeah. have not read the book Shoe Dog, I highly implore you to read that book. Um, and uh, we started franchising in 2014. And today we are the largest personal training franchise brand in the world, fastest growing in the fitness space with over 256 locations. We're in three countries in 32 states. We're about to enter into our next two countries. And when I tell you the vision is we will be the largest fitness brand in the world, let me tell you something. You have a better chance of seeing elephants fly than that not happening. Mm -hmm. And George, would you say that, because I think a lot of people, they want to lose weight, they want to get in fit, get, get, get fit. Uh, the biggest hurdle is going to the car, getting ready, and going to the gym. Right? A lot of people procrastinate. Yeah, I'll do it tomorrow, including myself, right? I don't feel like it. It's raining today, right? So this is not a, well, it is a revolutionary idea, but it's a, it's a simple idea that you see a need in the marketplace and you say, you yes. know what? I, I could do this. So during that time, what was it like in the beginning when you were building the business? Because most people would probably be like, oh, this is a crazy idea. No one would buy it. Like you're competing with all these gyms. Like, what, what, what did you do to overcome some of those challenges? So I could sit here for hours telling you the stories and the pains, I, the pain I have gone through, the, yeah. the, the sacrifices I've made. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in your mindset. 
And if you don't have 80% mindset, because I believe you have to have an 80% mindset, 20% tactical um, formula in business and in life in general, mm. you'll never succeed. But um, I used to train a very, very successful self-made billionaire. Mm. And I admired this guy more than anything. And I actually created a holiday called Swiss Cheese Day. And mm. you're more than welcome to be, come with me next August. It's August 1st. I celebrate it every year. And I was in his house. Now, this man literally had an aquarium for his bathroom like literally his shower was in an aquarium it was the craziest thing you've ever seen and i was like man i want to i want to be able to you know live this kind of life and mm. i shared with him the idea and he laughed in my face and told me the business was like swiss cheese it's got too many holes in it and you'll never succeed mm. and i left there and obviously i was you know a little discouraged and you know a little down but at that moment i created the five minute rule and i spent five minutes you want to kick, scream, cry, whatever you want to do after five minutes, you need to learn to develop a problem with your neck. You can't turn around. You only look forward and you move forward. I left there. I said, you know what? That's fine. Let, let, me, let me show them what's going to happen. You know, Seven years later, I'm on the front page in the business section of New York Times. It says disrupting the fitness industry. My man Bobby sees it, calls me up, and then gives me the call. Oh, I believed in you. I knew you'd do it. He wants to invest money now in the whole of the story. But the point is, um, every August 1st, I don't even eat the cheese. I go to the deli or the supermarket. I get a half a pound of Swiss cheese. I send him a video or I try to FaceTime him. And I tell him, happy National Swiss Cheese Day. Because you know what? The only one that controls your destiny is you. So stop looking on social media. Stop focusing on everyone else's journey. Focus on you. What Dan has done or I have done, you might not be able to do as fast or it might take you a little bit, uh, you know, you might be able to do it in a quicker time frame. Focus on yourself. There's so much distractions out there nowadays that people don't know where to go and they just have too many directions they're going in. The problem is people quit when they're so close. Mm. And you talk about working out. It's funny, you know, people know when they are going to the gym or getting a workout, they know they're going to experience pain. Like they know that they're going to experience pain when you work out. Mm. But when it comes to business or life and you have a problem and you have pain, they can't tolerate it. Mm. Pain equals growth. And that's why I always, I'm a big believer in, in putting yourself in uncomfortable situations because when you do that, it allows you to be comfortable. Mm. And that's why you have to build your mindset. But, you know, I could share other tons of stories, but it was very challenging. Dan, I probably went through about 50, 60 trainers. I was working out of my parents' dining room. There goes my father. He's walking in his underwear. I'm like, Dad, you got to stop doing that. Someone's looking at me like this is the most unprofessional thing ever. I'm interviewing people in coffee shops. It was so hard to find someone. People quit on me left and right. I honestly, I've had more challenges and issues with people quitting and, you know, appointments not being handled, but you just keep moving forward. And the more you keep moving forward and stay structured, that's how, you know, that's how you get that gift at the end of the, at the end of the, you know, that, that, that tunnel there. George, when did you feel that, okay, I've got something here? Was it the first like how many, how many locations, how many franchises you felt like, okay, I got something. Like what was that? What was yeah. that pivotal point? So, so when I started after two weeks, I left myself. I literally had my life savings. Okay. Literally. I, I spent everything I had. I saved up $15,000. I yeah. learned how to become a golf caddy. I'm not a big golfer. I don't like golf, but I learned how to become a caddy and learn the game. Mm-hmm. And you know, that was, that was a lot of money I was making. Save that money up. I spent $15,000. I left myself with just enough money for two weeks to run the business. And I gave myself two weeks to make it work. When I tell you, I barely slept. I barely slept. I was grinding nonstop. There was no Facebook then. There was no Instagram. I had no money for Google ads. What did I do? The number one most important thing that they don't teach you in school, Hmm. how to build relationships. Everything is about people. And what I did, I went out there, grinded every day, guerrilla marketed, build relationships. I was standing at every single high-end store, handing out flyers. I would not stop. I am the most relentless individual you're ever going to meet. And I don't drink coffee. I'm up at 3 a.m. every day. I will never change. This is who I am. But after two weeks, I was like, holy smokes. My van was completely filled. And I was like, I am really on to something. Got another van, got another van. And honestly, the vision from day one, because you have to have a vision. Without a vision, you have nothing. The vision from day one was to franchise this and be the largest fitness brand in the world. And that's exactly what we're doing. And we're continuing going forward. Mm. And in terms of scaling the business, how do you find, how do you find good talents? How do you find good people? Because in the fitness industries, you have a lot of, because I have a few friends who are in that industries too, where you're also dealing with, you know, people with, 
a little bit of ego, right? I'm the personal trainer, I'm the guy. Like, how do you get them all working together and kind of under one umbrella? So I've created this concept. It's the name of my book. It's, I have a gas pump that sits in, in our office. It's called Fuel, Fuel Your Drive, okay? Mm-hmm. Fuel is the four components, four pillars of success, fun, unity, earnings, and leadership. And I believe mm-hmm. you cannot run a business without those four components. Mm-hmm. And then we have drive, which are our core values. And some people ha- have laughed at me in the past when I told everyone that you need to have values in an organization. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's, <laughs> that's totally wrong. Because if you don't have values in an organization, you're never going anywhere. Mm-hmm. And everyone has to align with that and that's determination, respect, integrity, versatility, and excellence. Now, hiring is always going to be a mystery. Firing is always going to be a fact. But at the end of the day, you know, we've built such a great culture and we provided such such amazing tools and systems and processes where someone's coming in and everything's handed to them. The clients, the vehicle, the, the equipment, it's there for you. But the biggest thing is you have opportunity to grow. And most people in the personal training world Unless you're going on undercover boss and the CEO is there, the chances of you moving all the way up to the top of the ranks is very, very minimal. Mm. But we provide a lot of opportunity for career growth here because there's so many different doors and so many different things you could do within, within, our, within our business. Mm. And because I think part of it, a lot of entrepreneurs ask me, how do I attract good people? Not just having that vision, but I think having a vision that's so large that people want to be part of, right? If they say, oh, you know, I want to build a little business, it's like a lifestyle business. You're not going to attract anybody. No, and, and that's another thing, Dan, you know, which is very true is, first of all, if you don't have energy, if you're not excited, and I always say you have to be a good actor or a good mm-hmm. actress because mm-hmm. no matter what problem you're having, if your team doesn't have confidence in you, if yeah. you don't get people fired up, if you don't yeah. get them excited, you're never going anywhere. And something that I do every year that mm-hmm. people always say, Josh, why do you spend time on this? Mm-hmm. And I'll send you some of these videos. I create a little rap song every year. <laughs> that, I actually, that I actually write. One of my okay. friends who um, is connected with like P. Diddy and Bad Boy Records, he actually nice. sings it and puts it together. Nice. And I tie it in with our annual conference, which is called our Recharge. Mm. And I tell you, it is the most amazing hiring tool ever because it gets people excited. How much work goes into that? Oh, my God. It's, it's a lot of work and a lot of effort, but it's worth it because it's about obviously getting people fired up. And that's very, very important because if you're painting a vision, you better get people excited to be on board because if not, it's never going to work. Mm. And from your experience, and you've interviewed a lot of entrepreneurs as well, let's say for someone listening to this podcast, they are, they're where you were when you were just getting started, right? How do you go from that zero to, let's say, the $1 million dollars and how to go from $1 million to that $10 million and $10 million and beyond. Like different stages, what would be your advice and what, to, what do they need to focus on and what do they need to do? They need to, number one, be very consistent. They have to be very disciplined. It's, it's, it's impossible to be motivated every single day. You have to have discipline, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, it took me around six and a half, seven years to even do a million dollars, you know, but then from a million to 10 million happened a lot quicker. Mm-hmm. But you have to continue to change. If you don't pivot and change, you will die. Mm. You cannot remain the same, Mm. but you have to seek out other people who've done it and you have to be a sponge. You have to be open to constructive criticism. Look, I've been mentored by the best in the game. From Fred DeLuca, the founder of Subway, may he rest in peace. Fred is the greatest guy ever. Mm. He mentored me. Crazy story Mm. how I met him. Um, So there was this big seminar that I went to that I knew he was speaking at. Everyone else was sitting in these small seminars and I was trying to figure out, I was literally, then I was casing the building, trying to figure out which way this guy would enter mm-hmm. for his, for his big, uh, you know, speaking engagement he was doing the next day. So they had, the whole hotel had push doors, you know, like the push doors, you go out, you push the door, you know, mm-hmm. there's a little small key, kind of like an Allen wrench that you put in there. And if you pop it, it locks the door. So I came up with this idea in my head that I have to find, the, you know, one of the maintenance guys in the building and become friends with him and get that key and lock every single door and sit by the one open door because that's the door he'll come in. I literally spent all day building a relationship with multiple people and one guy I hit it off with. I bought him dinner. We were hanging out and I told him I needed this key and I told him what I was using it for. He gave me the key. I literally, Dan, locked every single door in the whole building that night. I, I did not sleep. I sat there. I waited for about almost eight hours. He walked in that door and there I was sitting there and I told him what I did. And he said, the first thing he said to me, he said, wow, your energy is something else. And all I'm going to tell you is what you just did. You're very special. It would be my honor to mentor you. 
And I got a lot of advice from him. I, I, I've been to the headquarters in Connecticut. I learned so much. And then what did he do? I left there because you always ask. Like at the end of this podcast, Dan will might say, hey, Josh, you have someone else who I, I could probably interview on my show. And I'm going to say, of course, Dan, I'm going to send out a couple emails to some really great people, just like I would do the same. I asked him. He yeah. passed me off to someone else. They passed me off to someone else. Next thing you know, I've had probably 50, 60 years of franchise experience from the best of the best under my belt. And that's allowed me to scale and grow. But I also, you know, I've been in like seven, seven, eight states in one week. I've done crazy things, but these things are very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm talking about doing things that other people won't do. So you can have things other people won't have. What's one or two big lessons you've learned from Fred? I'd say the first one is prepare to be disappointed. He used oh, okay. to always tell me, prepare to be disappointed. You okay. will be disappointed many times. Mm -hmm. And number two, he said, always trust your gut. He, that was mm -hmm. one thing he always told me. He said, always trust your gut because 90% of the time you're going to be right. And mm -hmm. honestly, I, I'm a big believer in my gut lately. Um, every time I have a feeling or I, or I think I see a red flag and I ignore it, it ends up coming back to bite me in the, in, in the end game. But um, yes. You know, he's taught me a lot about franchising, a lot about scaling, you know, setting up agreements and legal, you know, uh, things with fran. He just, he taught me so much because I didn't know anything, you know, and now, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very high level expert in franchising because I've learned. Yes. And with that particular model, now, as they say, for someone who's not in franchising, like they may, they may be doing online business or any type of business, uh, in this case, to scale, you use this particular model. Mm, what are some of the principles within franchising that are maybe universally applicable to other entrepreneurs? Yeah, well, listen, same principles apply. You know, you have to stay focused. You have to have a plan. You know, look, I started this without even a business plan. I, I had no business plan. You know, I don't know your thoughts on a business plan. I, I my, my personal opinion is I don't is, believe in. I don't. I've never done a business plan. I don't course. believe in any of that nonsense. You know, yeah. any listen, any driven individual who is so focused and driven will crush any diploma, crush any business plan, crush anything. When you sit there thinking and you overanalyze too much, you're never going to go anywhere. So the same rules really apply. You have to figure something out and just do it. People sit there and, and say, well, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Or I'll do it. You have to just start. I get so many DMs and messages of, you know, I'm thinking about this idea. I wanted to do it six months ago. You just wasted six months of your time. Just start. As, as our good friend Brian says, WTF. Yeah. You have to be willing to fail because you're going yeah. to fail. You're going to make mistakes. But if you don't learn from that mistake and you make it again, shame on you. You have to learn and then move forward. And you have mm -hmm. to surround yourself with great people. And the, the number one rule I say is don't ever focus on your weaknesses. But delegate your weaknesses and focus on your strengths. And surround yourself with people who are better than you, smarter than you. And you will definitely go to, you know, literally go, go limits. Mm. And one thing I noticed, George, is a lot of now young people, they may be on social media, they follow different people, right? And they see their success, they see, they, they, they see the glory, but they don't know what it takes, the, the blood, sweat, and freaking tears behind the glory. And, and I don't think most people have any idea what it takes. Like, they really, I don't think they know, like the young kids, like, I, I'm sure you see these comments all the time, I see it all the time on social media, oh, I'm going to build a million dollar business, I'm going to be this, oh, I'm going to build a hundred million dollar company. It's like, I don't think they even know what it means. They don't. Listen, to do a million dollars in a business is a lot. It's a lot. And people don't understand. Like if you watch even Shark Tank, yeah. how many businesses you really see do a million dollars? A million dollars is a lot of money to do in a business. Yeah. But then going from a million to 10 million, mm. that's a whole different game. And let me tell you mm. something, your team's going to look very different. Yeah. And you're going to think that people are going to be with you forever. Yeah. Everything changes because yeah. some people can take you to a certain point, but they're not going to be able to get you to that next level. Yes. It doesn't mean they're bad people. No, it's not at just, all. It's just it's not the right fit anymore. Or Correct. they don't have the desire or the capabilities Correct. to go forward, right? Yes. Uh, I also, also want to ask you about leadership. So you talk yes. about vision and culture. Uh, when it comes to leadership, uh, what have you learned? What is the biggest mistake you've made? I want to ask that first when yeah. it comes to leadership. You know, honestly, I have to say, and, you know, I, I, have, I have always been a very, very good leader. Um, mm. I, I have to say that. Have I made mistakes? Yes, I've made mistakes. You know, I've trusted mm. people who weren't right. You know, sometimes I've mm. told someone something that I shouldn't. But going back to what I said about being an actor and an actress, mm. to be a leader, 
you have to be optimistic at all times. Yeah. You have to look during the pandemic. I didn't fire or lay off anybody. Mm-hmm. Furlough, no one. Mm-hmm. My mentors actually told me, if you don't, you will go out of business. And I didn't mm-hmm. listen to any of them because I believed in my heart and in my gut that I'm not going anywhere because nothing's going to stop us, number one. And number two, I wouldn't want to do that to people's families. So I kept on everybody. And again, it was very challenging. I lost millions of dollars during the pandemic. Now mm-hmm. we're, we're actually better than we were pre-COVID. But, you know, to be a good leader, you have to always be a good poker player. It's very, very important. And again, I'm a human being just like everyone listening to this. Yes, sometimes I get anxiety. Sometimes I'm nervous about things. But you know what? If you're leading, you have to lead by example. I'm the first one in, last one out. I always have energy. I bring every energy to every meeting. I hold people accountable. People know the deal. You walk into my headquarters, you can eat off the floors. It's so clean. If someone sees a piece of paper on the floor, they will stop and pick it up because I lead by example. Now, if you come in the office and you don't care and you're late and you're lazy and you think cause you're, and I hate this word, I never use this word, but the boss, I never use the word the boss. I, people just call me the fearless leader. I hate the word boss. But if you come in as the boss and you think here first, not here first, Mm. you have a problem. You should always lead with your heart and think with your head second because I think the biggest thing to being a a very successful leader, Dan, is is EI, emotional intelligence, understanding people, understanding what makes them tick because money is not everything, trust me. But I know every single one of my team members' kids. I know what sports they play. I know when their birthdays are. I am obsessed with them because that's very important. And this is why I have a very, very high retention rate. And what are some of the things that you do to navigate through COVID-19 yourself? The pre-COVID-19, when that happens, what are some of the things you did? You didn't lay off anybody, but what are some things that you did to navigate? So I like to compare this to my ice bath I take every day. I take an ice bath every single day, 29 degrees. I love it. Even in the, in the dead winter, I take it in my garage. And sometimes my garage could be as cold as in the negatives. I love it. Lots of benefits. But when you first initially go in, you're like, you know, <sighs> right? But then after that, your mind kicks in, you adapt, and your body becomes almost numb. Mm. Now, when COVID-19 happened, that's what I did. I shivered for like two seconds, and I quickly pivoted. I, I changed my whole entire website. I switched mm. everything over to virtual personal training. Mm. Within three days, who do you think was coming up first in searches? Virtual WeWork. personal training, yeah. Yep. Now, yeah. everyone else continued to shake in the ice bath yeah. while I quickly pivoted. See, you're always going to fail. The question is, how fast do you recuperate? Mm. And I think within the industry, what do you see is happening in the fitness industry? Because I know you can see a lot of gyms, they go out of business, they are still waiting to go back, or when are we going to go back to normal, which both you and I know, normal is dead. This, this is the new normal. Like, what do you see is happening in the fitness industry? The, what, what, are, what are the trends? Yep. Well, look, I do think at some point, you know, gyms will be okay. I do believe that for the ones who could survive and I hope they do. And again, you know, I look, I love going to the gym. So, you know, I, I would never say anything bad about the gym because I, I need the gym myself. Yeah. Um, but, you know, people are definitely very nervous. You have three, three different buckets of people, right? You have the people yeah. who can care less. They'll yeah. literally go out and start licking countertops and could care less. Then you have the people who are a little nervous, you know, and they're not sure. And then you have the people that are not going to go anywhere. So with the gyms, you know, that survey that recently came out, you know, it said 60% of people are not going back. You know, um, it's going to take, obviously, I believe, a vaccine. It's going to take some confidence in time because mm-hmm. time does heal everything for this to kind of pass. You know, people think they're going to be wearing masks the rest of their life. You're not. You know, mm-hmm. it's just a matter of, of this passing. But I do think, you know, in, in, in this area right now, people need to pivot and figure out how they can take things outside, how they can, you know, obviously implement the, the appropriate social distancing. And for the people who love going to the gym like myself, they're still going to go, you know, working out with a mask is not great, you know, but I do it. And, uh, you know, it's funny. People say, oh, I can't wait for the gyms to open. Then the gyms open. Then they say, oh, I'm not going to the gym. I'm not wearing a mask. Too many excuses. You know, this is the whole thing. Again, back to your mind. You know, your mind is very powerful. And if you want to go places in life, you better get your mind right. Mm. And, you know, one thing I noticed is that even with you, it's not just fitness, it's not just business, because uh, I, I, we share the same value. I believe they're very much integrated. Yes. It's not just a business and life. If you've got problem in business, you've got problem at home. Yep. <laughs> you've got cash flow problem in business, you've got a cash flow problem at home. It, Correct. It's, it's all very much connected. Yes. And I, and I think we believe in the same, very much same approach. Talk to us a little bit about your podcast. 
because I yes. know you have a very successful podcast. Um, why did you even start the podcast in the first place? Because, you know, gym guys, you're running the business, you're CEO, like why the podcast? Yep. So I'm, I'm a very big believer in omnipresence and I like yeah. to be everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Like everywhere, literally. And, um, you know, I know you'll be joining me on my podcast soon, which I'm excited to have you come on, but I just, you know, I just said to myself one day, you know, no one's ever like really been able to help me. I've had mm. to figure these things out on my own. I had a lot of hardship over the years and, you know, I had to fall a lot and get back up to really learn, you know, how to do things appropriately. And I was like, you know, I can just get some great people on the, on my podcast, hold a podcast, provide great value. And again, at the same time, spread more awareness about my brand mm. and, you know, be able to just help people. And, you know, look, I got, I got a message. This is about, I don't know, three months ago. Mm. Like I almost got emotional reading this message. This young boy reached out to me. He was 16 mm. years old. Mm. Well, he lost both his parents. They were both drug addicts. They used to leave him and his brother alone in the house with no food. Mm. Once in a while, they'd come when they were able to, and they'd throw like some frozen meals in the freezer. He then got into drugs, almost killed himself and committed suicide, mm. ended up finding me on social media and finding my podcast and started listening to them and started really getting into my content. And now he's turned his life around and he sent me this message and he's like, I know you're probably not gonna respond, but you know, I wanted to reach out to you in hopes that you do. And I, as soon as I saw that, I said, give me your phone number. I called him right away. This kid was crying on the phone. And when I hung up after that call, I said to myself, wow, I impacted this guy's life. Like that's special. And you know, I love helping people. I just love helping people. And that's kind of why, honestly, I started it. Hmm. And a lot of people, they also ask me the same, the same question. I think it's the same reason. It's sometimes I, I joke about, I can't believe I get paid to do this, right? Because, <laughs> you know, I, we get paid to impact people's lives. And at the same time, we get paid to, to interact and connect with and learn from some of the brightest minds in the world and have a conversation like this. And it's because sometimes, you know, yeah, we, you know, we'll, we'll meet, we'll get coffee and all that. It's easier. Hey, you want to jump on a podcast? Let's connect. Boom. On a podcast, and then let's, let's do it. And same thing, that's how we connect it, right? Yes. We yep. show and say, hey, let's, let's jump on a podcast. I'll be your podcast, you'll be on my podcast. And, and here, it's like the beginning of a long-term relationship. Exactly. And that's what, that's, see, that's where, that's where so many people go wrong is they don't understand everything is about relationships. Like I said mm -hmm. earlier, you have to build relationships. It's extremely important. And it just opens up more doors and more opportunities for you in, in, the, in the end game. Mm. So uh, where do you see Gym Guys is going? So your vision is to go global, obviously. Yes. Right? Uh, share with us a little bit of a vision. Yeah, the, the vision is, look, we're going we're gonna to be the largest fitness brand in the world in the next 15 to 20 years. We're about mm. to open in a couple other countries. Mm. Um, you know, the, the model is extremely scalable. And, you know, it just really, look, we just launched in the United Kingdom. And oh, um, wow. it's, it's taken off so fast already. We already have clients. We're already servicing clients. It's, 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 it's just gone out of control. There's such a demand for this service because something you said earlier, which is I was just spot on is, look, time is an issue. Time is yep. money. People don't yep. have the time. When you can save yep. the time, work out right in your house, run upstairs, shower, head to work. Think about all the time it takes just getting to the gym, number one. Number mm -hmm. two, most people don't like to even be in that gym setting. Now with COVID, people don't even want to go there. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, everything is about convenience. We mm. live in a world of convenience and you have this whole in-home craze, right? Mm. Look, you have the Pelotons, the Echelons, the Mayor, all this stuff's great. The problem is people are naturally procrastinators. They mm. can't turn on the app, they can't turn on the machine. And at the end of the day, people need accountability. And then when that mm -hmm. van pulls up, it's not called the gym guys van, it's really called the accountability van. And at the end of the day, that accountability is everything. And this is why we're gonna continue to grow and scale and we will. You mark my words, we will be the largest fitness brand in the world in the next 15 to 20 years. I love it. And also, think about uh, as a franchisee, I could, if you don't mind, mind to share, how much does it take to get involved with, this a typical gym versus getting involved with gym guys, right? Oh, of course, yeah. yeah look, a gym, you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. Just to on come. renovations. Alone, you know, you can spend $500,000 just on, just on, some, some is over a million. You know, mm. just to get in with us, one location, you're looking around $90,000, that's it. And that's everything. That's the vehicle, all the systems, the accounting, the POS, the everything. You get every single tool, system, the support, the brand, everything mm. for pretty much $100,000. And if you want to buy additional territory, you're still under $200,000. Mm. So that means someone can get started without a whole lot of money, a little bit of money, but not a whole lot of money. And that also means that they can recoup the investments way sooner. Right? Yes. 
and this, I think I can see why you, you and, and Brian Scudamore, uh, both mutual friends, can connect because you guys have a very similar model. Well, he's more into the, the 1-800 got junk hauling trash, but you're in the fitness, but the model is the same. Model is exactly the same. I'll tell you, it's funny. I was trying to connect with Brian for years, yeah. years. And this is like, early, Brian's actually my first podcast guest I ever had. Oh, okay. So I tried to reach out to Brian for years, finally connected with him, flew out to his headquarters in Vancouver. Mm, yeah. And him and I just connected. And now we're such good friends. But it's just, again, like you said earlier, once you make that connection, you build that relationship is great. And I've opened up so many doors for him. He's opened up so many doors for me. And that's how it works, you know. And when you see, the thing is that there's so much negativity out there. Mm. Negativity doesn't bring good things. Like I sincerely love when he's being successful, when he's doing something great, when he's growing, just like now I'd like the same for you. I only would wish you success. Mm -hmm. When people want good things for you, those are the type of people you have to be around. Mm -hmm. But you know, I've done things for Brian and I, and I honestly didn't want anything in return. But once you build that relationship, you know, and, and honestly, that's why I got into uh, initially wanting to connect with him because the models are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people, they have this fear of, of, oh, I don't, I, I don't want to impose. I don't want to. I'm afraid to approach successful people. But you and I, I think we could talk all day about. You ask most, not all of them, but most of them would be willing to help. But not That's coming, it. yeah, yeah. Not, but not coming, coming from a place of, oh, you know, poorly to me, like a victim mentality. You should help me, like not out of obligation, but out of giving, out of adding value, out of connecting. Most of them would be, yeah, sure, like you know. And I'm sure Fred saw the same thing in you. Like, oh, this, he's a very motivated guy, right? 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. You know, you just have to ask. People just don't even want to ask. You have to ask. Nothing is impossible. Nothing. But you just can't do it one time. It might take you 500 times. It might take mm -hmm. you 1,000 times. You might have to do it 4,000 times. Mm -hmm. Consistency. Discipline. All, what we're talking about here is it's not like it's not magic pill. <laughs> it's not. It's it's doing the work. <laughs> it's it's being it consistent. Is. It's it's very true. Right? Yes. It, it's like social media. How to build audience? People ask me how to build YouTube. Have you have you looked at how many videos I have? Right. I did a thousand videos. I know. Right? It takes a long time, man. It's it's like, it, it, people don't have patience. People have no, no. patience. And no. and again, I'm not a very patient person when it comes <laughs> to getting things done. But when it comes to being patient with growth, I'm very patient because mm -hmm. nothing happens overnight. Nothing. <laughs> George, let me ask you a question. Let's say if I was to take away everything you have, you have to start from scratch, right? Uh, in the, let's say in the same industry, uh, what would you do differently? What, what advice would you give to a, a, a younger version of, of yourself? You know, it's funny. I get, I, I get asked this question all the time. Mm -hmm. And I usually say nothing because it's allowed me to learn to be to where I am today. Mm -hmm. But if I could and I, everything was taken away, I would, I would have, you know, told myself that, you know, literally paint a little bit of a picture of what it's going to be like. And I wouldn't have got myself so crazy because I used to remember just, just having a conversation with a team member back then, mm. then I used to like get such anxiety. I couldn't even breathe. I was wow. like so nervous to like talk to someone to like tell them they were doing something wrong because yes. I was so reliable on that person that if I'd said something wrong, I'd lose them. I used to hate that feeling. You know, now we have over 500 people in the system. It's, it's so different, but, you know, you have to learn how to control yourself. And a true person who could really achieve great success learns to control themselves in all situations. You never want to react right away. I, I used to get so crazy with things. I used to, you know, a trainer would jump in the vehicle and I know they were getting there at five. I would call them at 501. Like, that's very annoying. Mm. But you have to learn over the years mm. and make a lot of mistakes you know, and, you know, a van would get in an accident. I'd have a heart attack. I'd go crazy. Now, mm -hmm. I don't even care, you know. It's like, whatever, you know, we'll get it fixed. Insurance will cover it. Let's move on, you know. So it's, it's you know, you're, you're going to have very bad days and you're going to have very good days. And, you know, I always like to say life has seasons. And, uh, you know, you got to really understand and be built for the winter because when the winter comes, especially in Vancouver, it mm -hmm. gets very cold. It gets very cold. One of the, the a quick story, uh, my mentor asked me many years ago, he said, Dan, what do you think is the number one quality of, of a successful entrepreneur? And I said, well, it's having the vision. It's he said, no. Oh, it's being able to have a great idea. No. Oh, it's being able to sell. He said, no. So I, I kept giving him all these answers. He said, all those are very important qualities of a successful entrepreneur. 
but he said the number one quality of, uh, of a successful entrepreneur is the ability to endure pain for a long period of time. Dude, you're spot on. That's why, that's why I'm telling you, if you haven't read that book, Shoe Dog, I don't yes. know if you've read Shoe Dog. Yes, yes. I implore everyone to read that book. That is, that man, Mr. Knight, who I have more respect for than anyone, this guy went through so much pain, so much pain. He lived more than half his life in debt. Think about that. You, some people are getting panic attacks over paying their student loans back. Yeah. You want to talk about debt, you have no idea what debt is, okay? Mm -hmm. You have to be able to endure pain. And that's why I always put myself in uncomfortable situations mm -hmm. because I have the craziest mindset and I built that over the years. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, talk to us a little bit about your book feel uh, before we go. I'd love to learn more about it. And also for, for us, for our listeners, if they want to get a copy as well. Yeah, sure. I appreciate I appreciate that, Dan. So, um, you know, I just thought I should write a book and I made it very short. It's only 102 pages, I believe. Yeah, 102 pages. But very high quick. impact. High yeah. impact. Oh, it's, it's full high impact. But I just share some crazy stories. Mm. <clears throat> and, and honestly, if you look at fuel, um, mm. in the U, there's a gas uh, pump filling yeah. up the U because it's for you, right? The book uh, is for you yeah. to fill you up. And that's why the U is being filled up. Mm. And it's really for, to get an insight to understand. And this applies to any business if you want to be successful. I put together this crazy video of my morning routine, getting up at 3.45 in the morning. I put mm. it out on YouTube and I sold over 8,000 copies in like eight weeks. It was crazy. I didn't even <laughs> expect that to happen, but it did. And then I became a best-selling author, which was pretty cool too. But, yes. um, you know, it, 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 it's a great read, very quick. You can honestly get it done in a couple hours. And I also recorded the audio, which I recorded myself. So this energy on there is amazing. With your high energy, yes. Yep. And, um, you know, I just thought it'd be great. And, you know, my next book that's going to be come out, I'm going to be working on in the next, I'd say, a short period of time. I have something that, that's going to be in the works that's going to be really great. But um, nice. this one, I just want it to be short and quick. Nice, nice. Do you have a title for the second book yet, or are you thinking about it? Thinking about it. I have a couple thinking ideas, but nothing, yeah. nothing set in stone yet. Got it. Got it. It's going to be a, a thicker book? Oh, yes. It's going to be a lot thicker. Okay. Okay. And now what you've learned from since then till now, right? Correct, yes. Awesome. And what about for our listeners, if they want to find out a little bit more about your franchise? Jim sure, guys. yeah. You could, you could visit jimguys.com. Um, you want to find out about me, you could visit me on social media at Josh York GG or just Google Josh York and I will pop up. You'll see a very handsome individual. Thank you very much. No, I'm just joking. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. And, uh, you know, and, and on social yeah, media, YouTube? Yes, yep. So YouTube, Josh York. GG, Instagram, Josh York, GG, uh, LinkedIn. You can follow, find me on any, any of those platforms. Uh, last word of uh, wisdom advice for anyone listening. Yeah, I, w I would say, as I always like to say, you can, you can always do anything you want to do, anything. You can do anything you put your mind to. You have to believe it, and whatever you believe, you can 100% achieve. But you have to train your mind. And I am very big believer in just believing. You have to believe. And it has to be so strong that everyone else will think you're crazy. If people don't think you're crazy with your ideas and your thoughts, you're mm. not dreaming big enough. Mm. But dreams do come true. But you have to work very hard at it. And you have to understand, just like Dan said, you have to be able to endure pain for a mm. very long period of time. Thank you, Joyce. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Dan, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.